so oh my god if any brands watch this I mean they won't uh, but if they do I'm clearly not gonna make any relationships hi everyone it's Ai Jing here and today's video is really special because it's a collaboration with the fabulous Sophia's is beauty if you don't know her go check her out she focuses on luxury beauty and does amazingly thorough reviews if you like my reviews you'll definitely like hers as well also if you're into luxury fashion she's going to be your new go-to I discovered her channel a few months ago and felt in love with her content and I'm so grateful that she agreed to collaborate with me. So what are we doing? Well we are ranking some brands. This is not a serious video and hopefully it will entertain you. I'm going to get a little bit sassy about some brands and let you know about some products from other brands that you might be sleeping on. We are doing a slightly different set of brands. There are some repeats but there are a lot of differences as well so make sure you go check out her video. And if you came from her channel, well hello my name is Ai Jing. That is like Beijing with an I. I like to call myself the resident Lisa Aldred expert here on YouTube. I do a lot of other makeup reviews as well but also kind of like talking you out of buying makeup and I do makeup tutorials on the short section of my YouTube channel to inspire you to play with your makeup. I am definitely moving into more sort of low buy no buy content as well in this new year so if you like the sound of that make sure you subscribe. Okay I'm gonna shift my camera slightly. There we go. Like a professional YouTuber space here for the ranking screen. So these are the tiers that we come up with. Hello Lover, top tier, obviously. And this is reserved for the brands that like I truly, truly love and cannot resist their new releases. Honestly, there aren't that many brands I feel this way about. So I don't see many going up there. The next tier is underrated gems and I feel like that is pretty obvious. I feel like I like a lot of things from brands that people don't really talk about on YouTube and I just want to let you guys know about them. 15 minutes of fame. Well, I feel like this is <laughs> reserved for the celebrity brands almost but no. This is basically just like super overhyped products that you sort of buy into and you get it in your hand, you touch it and play with it and use it and actually it's just not that great. It's okay, but it's not worth the hype. And it also generally applies to brands that are maybe just a little bit hit and miss. They definitely have some really good products, but also just products that are meh. So the fourth tier is tickling my fancy. The thing is, there are just so many products out there, so many brands out there. The market is insanely oversaturated and you know, like I feel like there are a lot of brands I'm sort of interested in and pictures on their Instagram or like other people's reviews kind of intrigue me. But then I just don't really, but then I don't end up buying it. So this tier is kind of reserved for those type of brands. And then the fifth brand is stop trying to make fetch happen. So now we're sort of getting down to the brands that we don't like. And if you don't get this reference, then I, I don't know if we can be friends. Um, no, no, we can still be friends. <laughs> Just go watch Wing Girls. But uh, basically that tier is reserved for brands that are making products that are just not that interesting anymore. And maybe they're just stuck in the same old loop. And lastly, it's a no from me, dog. I can't, I can't say that with any sort of attitude because of my British accent, but you get the gist. Obviously this is a no-go. Like brands that we're not interested in, just avoid. No, 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 no. And obviously this tier system is completely arbitrary and I feel like maybe my ranking will be surprising to some of you and it might not make sense always. But it's not really a linear scale, you know what I mean? So without further ado, let's get into it. And the first brand we have here is Colourpop and I only have one line. Can they be releasing any more products? I mean, they just release so much stuff. Like, reviews of their collections are overpopulated on YouTube. I'm not interested. But I do own products that I really do love from Colourpop. None of them are new stuff. Like, this misunderstood palette, the Villains collection. This is, like, so old. But the colours, like, the formula in this palette is amazing. And the Sailor Moon collaboration. I'm a 90s kid, so Sailor Moon was, like... Sailor Moon was my entire childhood. I love Sailor Moon. I still love Sailor Moon. They're going into 15 minutes of fame. The next brand we have is Charlotte Tilbury. I mean, come on. Like, their marketing is, this product is going to turn back time and you'll be a newborn baby again. Magic this. Pillow talk this. Miracle this. No. 
I'm sick of it. Don't get me wrong though, like there are products that I love, like classic products, that, like my holy grails. Hollywood Flawless Filter, I love that. The Airbrush Powder, I love that. But as a brand overall, they're going in stock trying to make fetch happen because this is kind of the vibe I'm getting from them now. And Lisa Eldridge, okay, if you watch my channel, you know where this is gonna go. And it's definitely a hello lover. I buy everything from every release and honestly it's partly because I feel like it's kind of my specialty now on this channel and if I didn't have it I definitely wouldn't buy everything from every release but I probably would buy every release. The foundation is amazing, I love the liquid blush although the packaging like for many of her products are a bit of a problem. Um, I have all of her lipsticks like yeah if you haven't seen my lipstick comparisons videos go check them out you won't regret it. And the next brand is NARS. Okay, so for NARS, this is tricky because I feel like NARS is a classic brand. You know, it's that beauty counter brand that you go into and you sort of, and like everyone knows NARS, right? And I'm definitely a NARS fan. I think that was one of the first makeup brands that I sort of dipped my toe into. And I finished up a whole Laguna bronzer and the soft matte complete concealer, my favorite. But I don't hear a lot of people talking about them on social media anymore. Is that just me? Is it because of the channels I watch? Um, so for that reason, I'm gonna put them in underrated gems. The next brand, Rare Beauty. Ooh. The message behind a brand, like raising funds for mental health, Selena Gomez as a person. I watched her documentary on Apple TV. I mean, she's a woman after my own heart. I love Selena Gomez, but I have actually never used any of their products. That is partly because it only very recently came to the UK. And the thing is, I have so much, like I just have so much stuff that I wanna get through. I don't wanna buy anything new, but if I do buy anything new, they are going to be on the top of my list. So they're going in tickling my fancy. Makeup by Mario, huh. So my Makeup by Mario foundation review is on my channel where I did three days wear test and I'm actually wearing the foundation now to remind myself how I feel about it. It's all right. You know, it's a good foundation, but meh, overhyped. I also bought this lip balm, lip glow, nude glow thing in the shade light beige. And I bought it because Kathleen Lights really recommended it. But like, it wasn't like worth the hype. Just none of his products are worth the hype. I mean, we've only tried two, but out of two that I did try, mm, so 15 minutes of fame it is. Bobbi Brown, oh my God, Bobbi Brown. Bobbi Brown had one of my all time favorite foundations before they discontinued it. It was the Moisture Rich Foundation. Does anyone like know that foundation at all? And you know what, because they discontinued my favorite foundation, it's going down the lower tier, no I'm kidding. So like NARS, I feel like they have good staples, but people just don't really talk about them anymore because they are such a well established brand. And I feel like maybe they're quite a traditional brand. Maybe they don't use influencer marketing as much, so you don't really hear about them as much. But like, they have great products. Like their luxury single eyeshadows, amazing. I have this limited edition shade Sunflare. It's just like glittery gold goodness. Their shimmer brick is like the OG highlighter, right? Right? But I do feel a little bit sad that Bobbi Brown is actually no longer with Bobbi Brown, but Jones Road is gonna come up, don't you worry. And for that reason, Bobbi Brown, I think is gonna go into underrated gems because I just don't think they get enough love. MAC, um, <laughs> oh my God. I think the only thing I ever owned from MAC were two random lipsticks. One was the shade Snob, which was like this cool tone pink. And I still really want to be able to pull off cool tone pinks, but I really don't think I can. Another one was like a nude that was not really a nude, it was too dark because the person at the counter didn't really match me to a, like a correct nude. Uh, the ever difficulty of being Chinese in a white population, but whatever. <laughs> Sorry, first world problems. And I remember as a teenager, like matte counters was everywhere in all the department stores. And I remember always going in, like playing with this stuff. I love those extra dimension highlighters, especially like a couple of them were dual chrome. I remember them looking so cool. This was like a decade ago though. And now, you know, that's nothing new. Um, but I never bought their night plan eyeshadow. Something just never made me that interested in MAC. So for them, it's gonna be 
it's a no from me. Um, sorry, Mac. Do you like Mac? Let me know in the comments. Next, Urban Decay. I love Urban Decay, but their reputation on YouTube is kind of like, why are they releasing another Naked palette? I know recently this all went viral for their vinyl lip gloss that doesn't transfer. That did intrigue me, but I didn't pick any up. But the thing is, like, there's just some stuff that is just so good from this brand and one of them is the moon dust eyeshadows and i would just like to point out that i am like an og supporter because i still have mine in the old packaging i've had this for years is it expired probably do i still use it yeah because it's amazing oh what tier to put urban decay in hmm i think they're gonna have to go into 15 minutes of fame just because they have so many viral products and also i think Feel like they are a little bit of a hit and miss situation. Tower 28. Tower 28, like they're a relatively new brand, but I think they really lead into influencer marketing. The new mascara I absolutely love. It's not a brand that is so accessible in the UK, so I haven't tried that many things, but I would love to try the lip glosses and cream blushes. And the thing is, I would like to put them in kind of like one of the top two tiers, but I haven't tried enough to justify that. So they're going in 15 minutes of fame because so many of products just sort of go viral. Rowan. Oh my God, guys. Okay, Rowan. I mean, they're going in 15 minutes of fame. Let's just like, start off there. Because who even still talks about Rowan? Do you remember these? These? These little cream eyeshadows that everyone and their grandma was raving about and does anyone talk about them now no they're supposed to be clean beauty whatever they smell a little bit weird <laughs> benefit Ugh, benefit you know what I, I was just never that interested in benefit and i feel like all they do now is brow stuff now i feel like they can only play one tune so it's no from me. But actually, I don't actually try to avoid them. And they're not a brand that I'm just like, nah, never. So actually, let's move them up one saying, stop trying to make fetch happen because I feel like they're trying to make fetch happen. But it's not happening. It's not happening. Right, Jones Road. I feel like this brand encompasses Body Brown and her aesthetics as a makeup artist so well. And I really want to try the Miracle Balm. But the thing is, the reviews are just so mixed. That I don't want to spend that much money on first of all like a huge tub of product that I probably would never go through and second of all I'm really worried that I'll hate it yeah lots of stuff I want to try from Jones Road like that foundation it does tickle my fancy but you know I just I can't pull the trigger Kiko Milano is such an underrated brand I think that might be because I watch a lot of American YouTubers and Kiko Milano is more of a European brand but they have a lot of stores in the UK. I don't know if that's the same in America. And I think they have a lot in Europe generally as well. Um, yeah, comment down below if that is true for you guys. And I have like one of their blushes. I've got a, quite a few of their single eyeshadows that I really, really liked. I think they have products that are actually good and also really affordable as well. Like the quality for the price that you get is actually pretty amazing. Makeup Forever. Again, not an easily accessible brand in the UK. So for that reason, I haven't tried that that much from them. But every time I see their stuff, like I'm tempted. Like I really want to try to read Boot Foundation. I do have the Endless Cacao Liner, that, but I haven't tried it yet. If you know Katie Jane Hughes, like that's her favorite liner. I feel like if I didn't have so much makeup already, I would definitely be trying more or buying more from this brand. But right now they're just sort of tickling my fancy. Bare Minerals. Okay, one of my other favorite YouTubers is Kelly Gooch. And she's always going on about the Bare Minerals powder foundation. So I pulled the trigger and bought it. First of all, I got it in the wrong shade, so that didn't help but I still prefer my liquid foundations at the end of the day. So I ended up giving it to my mum because it does, it's still good. It's just not amazing. And I felt like maybe it did grab onto my dry patches a little bit. My mum has normal skin, like she doesn't have dry skin. And actually when I did just like swatch it on her cheek, it looked really good on her, but just not me. I feel like they're sort of a dying brand overall. 
Is that just me? I don't even think they're trying to make fetch happen. I don't know if they're trying anything. Are there blon bronzer? Bronzer? Blon what was it? The bronzer blush combination thing that I feel like it wasn't really a bronzer, it was just a blush. I um, had a bit of height a ago now, I think. But other than that, what are they doing? Okay, so the next brand is Seattle London and I have a video of full face of Seattle London makeup. That video itself, um, the pacing, like in terms of editing is really off. Like that was in the beginning stages on my YouTube. I mean, I still don't think my videos are perfect, but anyway, um, <laughs> not the point. The point is I tried a lot of their products and actually most of them were excellent. The Extraordinary Foundation is great. The Dewy Skin Tint is fantastic. I like, love their powders. Their, their blushes are an hourglass dupe. And if you watch my all time favorite makeup video, you would know that I love their lip plumping gloss. So Seattle London, underrated gems for sure. Dior makeup, <laughs> right, Dior makeup. Mm. I think Sophia and I will probably have very different opinions on Dior. I don't think she's like ranking it in this video, but I know like Dior is kind of like a specialty for her channel. For me though, mm, yeah. And the Air Flash Foundation, which is now discontinued, was so hyped and I tried it at the counter, but it clung to my dry patches. I bought the lip glow thing, the matte version, because Alana Davidson, who I'm not subscribed to anymore, but at the time, but at the time I was a pretty loyal subscriber and bought it based on her recommendations. And it's okay, but like for the price, you know, you're buying a lot for the name, in my opinion. Although I do have to say, I have one of their limited edition quints from many, many, many years ago. It's just a brown eyeshadow palette. Let me get out. So this is what it looked like. This is the palette. So yeah, literally just a brown palette. But for some reason, this the tones of brown in, the, in this palette is perfect. I love it. I've used this palette so many times. Um, it's kind of like my go-to palette if I don't know what I'm going to wear. Um, and if obviously I'm not trying to wear something too crazy. So I do really, really like this, but overall, 15 minutes of fame. Well, e.l.f. So e.l.f. is a really affordable brand that I definitely want to try more from, but so far, like, again, it's one of those brands that I saw loads of American YouTubers talking about, about how like it's so affordable and how like all of the products are amazing for the price. And then it finally came to the UK, but I feel like we have a very different stock, UK versus US, and quite a lot of the products that are hyped up about, I feel like it's really difficult to find. So this is like a brand that is tickling my fancy, um, but I can't get hold of anything because I'm British. I do have the Putty Primer. The Putty Primer is all right, but I don't feel like it actually really did anything. Huda Beauty is definitely another brand that is tickling my fancy. And the eyeshadow palettes always look, like when I first look at them, I'm, I'm so tempted. I'm like, oh, I wanna buy it. But first of all, they're quite pricey. Second of all, when I actually look at the colors, I just feel like there are so many redundant shades, like so many shades that will probably just look the same on the eyes. So for that reason, I don't actually end up buying anything from them. Ilia. Ilia, I don't know. Ilia, again, is another brand that is sort of on, in a cleaning beauty space. And I have their Limitless Mascara, which I actually really, really, really like. I feel like it will be a brand that I enjoy. So they're kind of tickling my fancy. And the next brand is Kaleidos. Kaleidos is an indie brand that a lot of YouTubers talk about. Um, I think because, you know, they give out PR and do a few sponsorships. But for some reason, I find Kaleidos a little bit intimidating. I don't know if it's because the colors are almost too bold. <laughs> sort of thing. They have some pretty out there lipstick colors as well, right? Um, Again, I don't think they're actually super accessible for a UK resident. Uh, so they are tickling my fancy. Kosa. I bought into the height. I got the Revealer Concealer in the shade 3.5, but it has a super weird like green undertone on my skin. Maybe just me, I bought the wrong shade. You know, the shade kind of wasn't really easy to navigate on the website. And I also bought the Cloud Set Powder. I don't know. It's it's a good powder. I, I don't know, is it a good powder? I prefer my Charlotte Tilbury airbrush powder and my 
Pat McGrath powders. So Kosas, you are just 15 minutes of fame. I feel like you're just a bit all hype. I do apologise if I'm being just a little bit too blunt and too sassy. Not much, is, there's not much filtering going on. I'm just sort of going and saying whatever. So, oh my God, if any brands watch this, I mean, they won't, uh, but if they do, I'm clearly not going to make any relationships. KVD, recyclable packaging by their eyeshadow palettes, which I think is great. For that reason, they sort of intrigued me. And they're, they're good Apple foundation went viral but you know this was in sort of internet terms a decade ago i feel like a brand that is trying to make fetch happen but i don't want to tell them to stop trying to make fetch happen because i like the idea of having packaging that is completely recyclable i think that's really cool and that's definitely something that we need in the beauty space so I'm gonna move them up one to tickling my fancy. I don't know the brand enough to know whether this is just a tokenism thing for them or whether they're actually trying. I haven't really researched. Huh, Morphe. Yeah, yeah. Next, nude sticks. I think this is probably a dying brand. Is it just me? I feel like they're going in the same direction as Becca and Bite. I remember getting nude sticks and Bite Beauty mixed up all the time, and that's probably not good because Bite has gone down under. Sad face because their lipsticks were great. Yeah, I mean, like, the, I have the Bondi Bay stick because, again, I was influenced. It's, it's good, but meh. So they're going, stop trying to make fetch happen. NYX, ooh, another affordable brand. Another brand that I watched on YouTube, everyone like loved, but at the time couldn't get them in the UK. Now they are in the UK. I've tried quite a lot of things. I've tried their primers, I've tried their eyebrow products, um, like eyeshadows, oh, and like a blush palette as well. But none of the stuff actually amazed me. Nothing was like, oh my God, when I use this up, I'm gonna have to repurchase. So for that reason, I think they're gonna go in 15 minutes of fame. I don't really feel like it fits into any of these tiers really because they're just sort of meh. Ram Beauty. Ugh. I love Mariana Grande. She has an amazing voice, but the makeup line, no, I'm not interested. Um, Rose Ink. They are tickling my fancy. But the thing is, right, like I want her body, but I don't think buying her makeup brands will actually give me her body. So there we go. Sigma. Oh god, Sigma. So I bought the Enchanted palette by Sigma. Again, did a review on my channel and like was just really not that well by it. The mattes I really did not get on with. The shimmers and metallics were really pretty, but the mattes were no. Do you like their brushes? Um so bit of a hit miss. And I do feel like they do a lot of influencer marketing as well. So for that reason, 15 minutes of fame. The balm, the balm, let me show you. Can you see that pan? Yeah, yeah. The only highlighter I have a pan on, partly because it's old, but partly because it's good. Unfortunately, I feel like they might be dying, but I think they're underrated. I think they're underrated. Tom Ford. No. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to spend that much money on makeup. And I know a lot of people will have different opinions about this. And I and I completely agree with the fact that sometimes makeup is an experience, right? It's not just about how it looks on your face and the performance, but also the packaging, the way you feel when you use it. But I do think that is a bit of a slippery slope. Celebrities that wear Tom Ford suits though, I mean, they always look good. But the Tom Ford makeup is not something that I would buy. Um, maybe at like a discount store, but I'm not gonna buy them at full price. Nah, 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 nah. Too Faced, not interested. I'm so not interested. It's a no from me. And I feel like they try like all of these packaging theme releases and I mean, I'm 30, so I'm not gonna go for that. Like I'm not a 12 year old gonna go for ooh, a chocolate bar palette. Ooh, a teddy bear palette. Oh, a peach palette. I'm sorry, that doesn't work on me. And because that's all they come out with, it just, it's just like very off-putting for a grown woman. Nah. Woma Beauty, it is so underrated. I bought their concealer ages ago and I still haven't tried it just because I have so much makeup. But the eyeshadow palette is the Coming to America, the Royal Edit. I mean, they're a black owned brand. It's kind of sad that the whole sort of 
buying black owned brands was kind of a trend right and that's not cool this shouldn't be this eyeshadow palette is very very nice this is my perfect like pink gold shifty dual chrome shadow we just have a few more brands to go i'm gonna rattle them through those of colors underrated and i really hope they're not dying because i think they have some great products and i think they are still selling these block party eyeshadows the last time i checked they were like six dollars on their website again not a brand super accessible in the uk they are like some shades are better than others this shade is not as good this is the sky's the limit shade but it's really pretty cool toned gray they have loads of ooh, shimmers in there the shade teal me more is slightly it's got a slight shift to it but it's this really beautiful sort of greeny blue it's just well it's called teal like uh, very very pretty they are really stunning eyeshadows m cosmetics okay Michelle Fan, she's, I mean, she's the pioneer of beauty YouTube and no one can deny that. Though recently, I don't know, some weird stuff's been going on, right? There's all sort of rumours going on there. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but her products, I want to try them. But they are expensive. And like I said, I have too much stuff. And like, kind of rare, like Rare Beauty, they're, they're the two brands on top of my list that I really want to try. Probably M Cosmetics more so. Uh, kind of their whole aesthetics and marketing it draws me in a little bit more. Um, but maybe I should, I don't know. At this point, right, it's kind of about which brand you want to support rather than which product. Um, because they're probably all really good. Next brand, Estee Lauder. Another classic brand. And I'm going to put them in underrated gems. I think they do have stuff that have gone viral, like the Double Wear Foundation. I did try the full coverage Double Wear Foundation in a sample. And I remember when I first put it on my face, I was like, oh my god, you can't see my pores. I was shocked. In a good way. And I had their sort of like liquidy Double Wear Foundation that was like my first posh foundation. Seriously, if you want something that doesn't smudge, you need to have double wear Estee Lauder mascara that is amazing and also their poor minima like what is it called I can't remember but I'll put like a photo of it when I use that serum my skin just feels so silky and it never actually blocks my pores either which is amazing but yeah I think underrated Glossier I like Glossier their U perfume is fantastic their brow flick is fantastic it's my staple like Glossier Play obviously went down under, a lot of staff got laid off and there was a whole thing about like racism for you know in store, how the employees were being treated, management wasn't like well versed in dealing with racism in a workplace. So they had a lot of colourful history, pun not intended. When stuff like that happens it does leave a bad taste in your mouth right? I can't deny though, I do still like some of their products. So for that reason, they're going in 15 minutes of fame. Hourglass, mixed feelings for sure. Um, really mixed feelings. <laughs> they are trying a little bit more about being inclusive, but I'm not convinced right now. I think they're mostly overpriced, to be honest. Their highlighter though, that is like one of my favorites, I have to admit. Yeah, a lot of hype, so 15 minutes of fame. Hit and miss, like, I mean, I did buy into the hype and I have their products and I don't hate them. Kylie Cosmetics, do not like the Kardashians. They stand for pretty much everything I hate about society. Mm, mm, mm. Linda Halberg, I love Linda Halberg. She's great. She's underrated. I almost want to place her in the Hello Lover tier, but, ooh, but I, like, I don't know. I, don't, I feel like that's not entirely honest. I think she is just underrated, though. Um, her Shimmer, um, her one of her new releases, this little gym here called the Shimmer Saga. It is so beautiful. Look at it. Look at it. Sorry, I didn't mean for that to be so aggressive. I mean, look at that. Like, look at these. This is so shiny. And also I bought loads of their eyeliners when they were on sale. Um, I mean, all of her makeup are called like multi-purpose, which is great as well. Um, I can probably do a full face of Linda Halberg. Um, if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Natasha Denona. Mm. 
struggling, struggling. I mean, they're not underrated, they get a lot of hype, but they're not in the Hello Lover section because so many of their releases, you know, I'm just sort of like, nah. I do have quite a few of her eyeshadows that I love. So yeah, it's, it's a we again, like I said, this scale is very arbitrary, it's not linear, it may not make sense, but they're going in 15 minutes of fame um, because like, yeah, everyone talks about them. I think they get enough love, but definitely not a brand that I, I wanna buy everything from, you know? Four more, four more, Pat McGrath, Pat McGrath, 15 minutes of fame. The reason why it's not in the Hello Lover section is because their newest like Love Valentine's Day collection is such a snooze, I'm so not interested. Their Lunar New Year collection as well, snooze. But the Star Wars collaboration, that was, like very exciting for me being a Star Wars fan and the quince quality were absolutely amazing. So I know that New Year's release are gonna have some liquid eyeshadows, which is obviously a new thing from them, but the colours wasn't not interesting to me. And I'm generally not a huge liquid eyeshadow fan because I like having a little bit more control when I apply eyeshadow and I find that difficult to do with liquid eyeshadow. Shiseido is definitely underrated. Do you remember the Shiseido Aura Dupe? So it comes in this little pot and it is just a beautiful eyeshadow topper. But I can't really swatch anywhere because I've got sparkle galore already. But I don't know if you can see on the inner part of my arm. Yeah, you probably can't. But it's just shimmering because that's what that product does. It just gives a little bit of dancing, diamondy look to your eyelids. Or even over cheekbones if you want to. And of course, the Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Foundation, one of my like all time favorites, definitely. It was my wedding foundation. They probably just don't go into influencer marketing that much. So they got not talked about a lot, but I do really think their products are great. It Cosmetics, <laughs> it's all dying. No one talks about them anymore. Um, I really like the CC cream. The shade range was crap. I know they've expanded it, but I don't know if it's any, if it's that much better to be honest and they always relieve the love is the foundation brush every year but it's the same brush just repackaged i'm not sure how i feel about that because that is a company incentivizing you to collect them all and that you know plays into your consumption and they're not things i will yeah no so i think they're gonna go into stop trying to make fetch happen Sorry, the cosmetics. And the last brand that we have is About Face. I, again, like the music. She is very pretty. Um, her voice is very unique, but it's expensive. <laughs> I was not like really interested in the brand, but I love the fact that it's kind of, I mean, each thing is multi-purpose. It's not just for your eyes. It's not just for your cheeks. It's for everywhere on your face and it's, kind of an expression of artistry rather than makeup. Does that make sense? And I really like that messaging. And for that reason, they are tickling my fancy. The reason why I don't want to buy anything or actually never pull the trigger is it's because it's a little bit too expensive um, for what it is, I feel like. They have come out with these new glitter paints that look really cool, but I have all of the shimmery eyeshadows I need in the world. I don't actually want to make the purchase okay and that's all of the brands so what do you guys think about my ranking do you agree do you disagree was i being too mean let me know i would love to hear your opinions on these brands let's just have a conversation talk like friends because that's really what i want my channel to be about just like friends talking about makeup yeah if you haven't seen Sophia's video, go check hers out. I am very excited to hear her opinions. I also really like Sassy Sophia. That does come out sometimes. So yeah, and again, thank you so much to Sophia for collaborating with me. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.